Okay, so worst free agency signings, basically, from Bleacher Report. DeRozan was technically a sign and trade, but they've got this number one. You'll see a 32-year-old who's a poor fit with his new club. See, right then and there, it's like, look, I think the Bulls' spacing is going to be good. DeRozan's an awesome passer. He can have some two-man action with Vooch, rolls, and pops. And I feel like you get Zach Levine moving off ball, DeRozan can make those passes to him as well. It also gives them a lot of lineup versatility, where there's always a good scorer on the court. He has never been a great or even good defender, that's true. He's playing next to Levine and Vooch. Yeah, I feel like there's this like thing going on on the internet right now where like Bulls fans are like, no, we're going to be good on defense, and then non-Bulls fans or haters are like, no, they're going to suck. I think they're going to be like not horrible, not great, hopefully not terrible overall. Here's the thing, DeRozan's growth as a playmaker won't be easily utilized in Chicago as Levine, Vooch, and Lonzo all need significant touches. I think it'll be a bit of a push and pull about like who's the primary ball handler and, and, and all that stuff. But I just feel like there's so much passing between, you know, Levine who's gotten better, DeRozan who is statistically at least one of the best passers in the league the past couple of years, and then Vooch and Lonzo, I just feel like it's, it's it, like that has to work out, you know what I mean? I mean, you're talking about Levine, who's already shown some abilities to move off ball. Vooch, like I said earlier, he can pop, he can roll. He can also make plays from the top of the key. Like, unless no one is moving ever off the ball, I feel like they're going to be okay. And this as well, moving DeRozan off the ball only highlights his limited shooting range, and he shrinks the floor. See, the thing with the 28% from three, like, yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's true. Like, the guy's never been a great three-point shooter. But I feel like if you ignore him, that's just going to give him room to either get into the pull-up or get ahead of steam going to the rim. Maybe competing for the sixth or seventh seed in the East. Yeah, I feel like there's a whole bunch of teams in the East right now who are going to talk themselves into we can get to the fifth seed or something. Obviously, they're not all going to do it. Now, here's the kicker. You could argue that Young, as in Thad Young, who will cost $14 million next season, contributes more to winning than DeRozan. Now, look, I'm a big Thad Young guy, okay? Defense, cutting, offensive rebounding, overall rebounding, really. The passing was awesome last year, but DeRozan just makes their offense so much more dynamic. Yeah, they take a hit defensively, no doubt about it, but I just do not agree. But you know what? I appreciate... Uh, them going out on a limb like this. All right, now they have Kyle Lowry at number nine. A 35-year-old who has topped 65 games once in the past five seasons. Yeah, it's a bit of a fear, no doubt. Just posted his worst box plus minus and fewest win shares. I don't. When you get when you start getting to this level of advanced stats, I just don't care. Like, I care about true shooting percentage, and that's almost about it. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a risk with his age, no doubt about it. Duncan Robinson with the heat, so Miami just getting roasted all day here. Uh, to save you the whole thing, it's basically this. The heat needed Robinson more than he needed them, and then they just say he's not good enough to get paid this much money, basically. With shooters, especially of Robinson's caliber, it's more than just the points per game they put up. It's just teams have to stay glued to him at all times. It opens things, things up for other guys. And that's just pretty much the going rate of dudes who can shoot, man. I mean... You go as far back to, like, J.R. Smith with the Cavs. He got paid. Tim Hardaway Jr. got paid. Joe Harris. Davis Bertans. It, it is what it is. If you can shoot that well, you're going to make money like this. Maybe the NBA just as a whole needs to, like, lower the value of shooters in free agency, but it's not happening. Devontae Graham on the Pelicans. The Pelicans had themselves a weird offseason. They sacrificed a future first for the right to overpay Graham. They lost Lonzo as well. He's great from three. He sometimes looks like Dame with the pull-ups and the contested threes. And he's a good passer, but the defense isn't too good, and he's really bad at two-pointers everywhere. At the basket, mid-range, he just the guy can't make twos at all. Evan Fournier with the Knicks, four years, 78. See, it's really like three years, what, 60 or so? Because the last year is a team option. I mean, I do understand where you can be like, look, they could have gotten somebody for cheaper who could just simply make open shots. The way that I look at this is they needed somebody who could give him some spacing. He can help him out, and he's a trade chip. 
Because, again, given the team option, the contract is going to become an expiring a little faster than it feels like it will right now. Cool with it, honestly. Like, to me, if you're if you're going to kill the Knicks for a contract, it would be uh, probably the Nerlens Noel contract. Jared Allen on the Cavs. Five years, 100 million. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, for 20 million, you're basically hoping he can be like Clint Capella with some more offense to him, whether that's in the post, whether that's developing as a shooter, uh, passing. Uh, the Evan Mobley fit as well. Can the Cavs find proper spacing with that front court? It's a fair question, certainly. Who else was going to give him this kind of coin? That is a fair question. I don't know if anybody else was going to offer that. Maybe they could have gotten him... Like, if they really wanted to give him the five-year deal, maybe they could have gotten him for, like, five years... 75 or 80 or something. 